when you walk into a really public bathroom, like say at the airport, do you ever wonder which stall is the safest to use? Like which one has had the least amount of asses on it? This is where your mind goes, Mike said. We were driving back from Boston after a very romantic getaway. Broadway show, fine dining, the whole nine. The timing was not my best. Silence filled the car, and I wondered if I'd finally said the thing that pushed Mike over the edge. See, all my life, men have told me I'm too much. Like when I was a child, my dad punished me for questioning the Bible. And when I walked into college graduation, woo, my boyfriend snapped, Sarah, no. Every man thereafter has shushed and shamed and silenced me until I became a shell of myself. It took years of therapy to realize I'd rather be too much and single than hide the real me. So when my friend told me she found the perfect guy for me, I decided to take the real Sarah out for a spin. After our first date, I told her, it's not gonna work out. She said, wait. You talked nonstop, Mike made you laugh, and he's tall, dark, and handsome. What's the problem? After our second date, I asked my sixth sister, is it normal that Mike compliments me all the time? He said he admires my work ethic. Yeah, that's normal, my sister said. It's our messed up childhood that is not. I wanted to believe her, but when I burst into hysterical laughter in the silence of the tea house on our third date, I braced myself for reprimand. Mike said, I love your laugh. I realized I'd misjudged him to be this stuffy upper class physics nerd who'd never date a loud, outrageous woman who listens to Lady Gaga and tells that's what he said jokes. In my being naked. But Mike wasn't the stuffy old fart I'd imagined, so maybe he did like the real me. I made a deal with myself. As long as things stayed interesting and Mike stayed interested in me, I'd keep seeing him. And soon, I stopped fretting over the zany things I said. And even when I made Mike blush, he swore he loved how my mind worked. Then my grandfather died. I shared with Mike how only four of us attended his grave. There was no funeral. I'm not surprised, I said. My family isn't close. Why do you think that is, Mike asked. I burst into tears. All the trauma and abuse I'd endured throughout my life flooded me now that I was in a healthy relationship. I wasn't allowed to cry when my brother died because he turned his back on God. And when I was married, my ex-husband left the room every time I cried because he couldn't handle unpleasant emotions. So I don't cry in front of anyone, especially men. I got so angry at myself for having this emotional breakdown in front of Mike, but I couldn't stop. I sobbed and sobbed. Mike carried me to the couch where he held me for an hour. He held me until I stopped crying. After that night, I found myself saying things before my brain could censor my thoughts, like I confessed my traumatic past. I started calling his house, our house. And the first time he said, God, I love you, Sarah, I joked, I am pretty funny. But nothing I said pushed Mike away. This brings us back into the car after our very romantic weekend and my obnoxious bathroom question. I can't be the only one who wonders this. Mike just chuckled. Before we do the math, what do you mean by safest stall? Is it really the number of asses or perhaps the cleanliness of said asses. I looked across the car in pure awe. 
This is the man I'm going to spend the rest of my life with. He truly gets me. Maybe I just had to go through all those shitty relationships to find the safest one to park my ass. Thank you.